Hi, this is Kina Kim with PivotalDiscovery.com. We're here at ILTA 2009 with Erica Santiago of LitWorks, and she is going to share some practical tips on training. Erica, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kina. I have three tips for you today on training. The first two have to do with you're the one who wants training, and the last and third tip has to do with if you are the trainer. So let's get started. The first tip is to first define your learning objectives. What do you want to learn? What kind of return on investment in the training, whatever it happens to be, do you expect to get out of it? Uh, what do you already know? First, you have to figure that out so that you know what it is that you're looking to find out. If you feel like you don't know anything or you're not sure what you don't know, mm -hmm. then that's good to know. <laughs> Believe it or not, I know that sounds like a tongue twister, but that's actually good to know. If you don't know what you don't know, then that's good too. What experience do you already have? Are you an attorney? Are you looking for CLE credit? Are you a litigation support professional inside of a firm or a corporation or a government or a government agency? Are you a litigation support professional inside of a law firm or a vendor? Uh, what do you expect to get out of the training? What do you hope after three days or five days or four days to get out of that training? Uh, and of course, you know what kind of uh, investment do you plan on making from a perspective of time and finances into the training. So fantastic and most of my students have their jobs pay for their training but I have a lot of folks about 20 percent of my students actually pay out of their own pocket. So you have to make that determination. Uh, so that's number one, define your learning objectives. Number two is do you, what kind of training do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want self-directed training or classroom training? I do a lot of self-directed training, but uh, I also attend conferences and seminars where it's more of a classroom setting. I actually go to classes uh, sometimes, uh, depending on what it is that I'm learning, or I go to an online class. So if it's self-directed training, self-directed training includes blogs, articles, reading magazines like Litigation Support Today or Law Technology News. That's where you decide what interests you, what are you trying to get out of the training. See tip one. Uh, Google alerts on e-discovery. I have a Google alert, so every day um, I see what's new and exciting in the blog world or the internet or news on electronic discovery. I also have one for project management, so I can see what's happening in that arena as well. So whatever it is you're trying to learn, use the uh, information that's already out there to learn it. Uh, networking with others is another great way to learn. Uh, free, uh, free vendor sponsored webinars is another excellent resource. Now you have to take anything that's sponsored by a company or a vendor with a grain of salt. That goes with articles or vendor case studies and white papers. You have to think past what the motivations are of the person that's speaking or writing in order to really take away from that something that you can learn, that nugget of information that you didn't know before. And that's key when it comes to self-directed learning. Classroom learning, you can take it for granted that the person teaching is teaching from an objective point of view, and that's important. When you're doing classroom training, consider are you working with a subject matter expert that's teaching the class or a facilitator? When I take business classes, a lot of times that person is a facilitator, so they're not the subject matter expert. But when I go to e-discovery or litigation classes, I'm looking for the trainer to be a subject matter expert as well so that they can speak beyond just the curriculum that's laid out for that class. Uh, do you want to be in a small group classroom setting or a large group? Uh, I personally, as a trainer, prefer smaller groups to large groups because then I can answer everybody's question. Uh, large groups, you have that college class setting where you've got 80 other people in the room and everybody's not going to get their question answered. Everyone's not going to be able to speak to the instructor. And finally, it's number three. So that's, we've already talked about one and two. One is define your learning objectives. And number two is, do you want self-directed training or classroom training? I personally recommend both. A combination of both works well. But number three is, what if you're the trainer? What if you're the one that has to do the training? What are some things that you can do to make sure that you're meeting others' learning objectives? Well, if you're in a law firm or a corporation or a government agency, mm -hmm. there's certainly plenty of free resources such as all the self-directed training that I've mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. You can take that uh, an on-demand webinar. Most of the webinars that are offered by vendors are saved for future reference. Well, you can play that as a lunch and learn for your paralegals and pause it where you want to pause it 
and then take questions and then just respond to those questions. You can uh, work with your firm's training department if you have a learning management system and work with the trainers who are developing for that e-learning system and provide them with content because you're a subject matter expert in litigation support and e-discovery and you can make that information available to your attorneys, your paralegals, and the other folks on your teams. You can also create a blog or a wiki internally in the firm to capture knowledge. Uh, most of us, uh, and I just spoke to someone today about this, most of us keep everything in our heads and in litigation support, that's great. We have a lot of knowledge, but it's in our heads. And so it's the, whole, the old hit by a bus number. Do I want to make sure, how do I make sure that if I get hit by a bus, everybody else benefits from the information that I had in my head? And so there's a way to collaborate and put all of that together if you're the trainer and then direct people to that information. And so that uh, part of that becomes uh, a link to your intranet, you can set up PowerPoint presentations, you can use e-learning tools where you can record your uh, own webinars and you can then highlight uh, your research or any information that you have and uh, through your firm or organization's intranet and once a week highlight an article, highlight a blog post, whether it's something you put together or something you found out on the internet through your Google Alert because if, as the trainer, you want to make sure that you stay trained as well. Um, and finally, when I was in sales at, at one point in my career, I, and this predates Google Alerts, <laughs> but I used to make sure that I dedicated at least one day a week to doing my own research. That way I had something to talk to my clients about. Uh, and all, again, when you are the trainer, it doesn't mean that you cannot attend training. So if you're attending a conference or you're attending a formal classroom training session, look at it as a train the trainer opportunity. So take notes with the intention of being able to share that information with others when you get back to your firm or organization or office so that you can then demonstrate the value immediately mm -hmm. to the folks that signed the check on you getting to come to class uh, that you benefited from that and that you're able to share it with others on your team. Great. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you.